Hello, good evening and welcome to Hucknall in Nottingham. Uh, I'm John O'Bard and here with this week's uh, British Hockey Chat, the final one of the season. Um, using a new microphone, as you can probably see. So please, anybody who's on, tell me that the sound is okay. I would really appreciate that. Uh, I also appreciate it if you would just retweet the link out so we can get as many people in here as possible for the last discussion of the season. Uh, of course, if you want to get in touch, thank you, Lightning Jack. Good to have you along. Top mascot, top mascot. Uh, if you if you want to uh, send questions, uh, pop them in the chat as Jack has just done. Or you can do them to Twitter at John o. Bullard. Uh, I will be monitoring that throughout the night. <clears throat> a really good mix of questions for this final one of the season. So with some really uh, so some various uh, subjects covered. So uh, it sh- there should be something for everyone, hopefully. Um, so please get involved with the discussion if you can as we go on throughout the night. Um, and we we will be on as long as it takes. And uh, but don't worry, uh, I will be doing these periodically throughout the off season. Hopefully, once a month uh, as news breaks throughout the off season. So it's not as if I'm going to stop and then uh, come back come back next season. Um, there will be ones throughout the season as well. Don't forget as well, if you are watching this, you can listen to this as an audio podcast. The audio podcast will be available on all platforms uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes after this uh, recording has stopped. And uh, all the links are in the description on YouTube, or I will pop them on Twitter and in various Facebook groups. So we will crack on straight away. So thanks for joining me this evening. And uh, we start with a sort of Panthers-related question, but also uh, a a National League one as well. And it will come clear when I I mention it. It comes from Dave, who is at Dave on Twitter. He is a Sheffield Steelers fan. Evening to you, Adam. Uh, And he says, was told yesterday, I, Sheffield, that the Steelers, Steel Dogs are potentially looking for a new coach as Greg Wood has been approached by an elite league club. Would you be happy with him in Nottingham? Now, I'd not any heard any such rumours like this. So uh, when a question regarding something in the National League comes up, I go to my go-to person for that, which is Anthony Russell. I don't know if he's on this evening yet. He normally is. But uh, and I sent Anthony a DM and said, uh, I've had this question. Do you know anything? Because he has his ear to the ground for most things, uh, NIHL and National League. And he sent me a message back, and I will try and find it because it was from earlier today. Uh, Here we go. And he says, he said, let me poke about. And he says, "Um, yeah. The line he says, the line I'd be giving him retort. I can't say the line he'd be giving him retort, but let's just say the line he'd be giving him retort was that it, there's no chance of it happening. Um, so I think that puts that one to bed, uh, for now. As for, as for the question though, he says, well, because Dave did ask, would I be happy with him in Nottingham? I don't know enough about him to say whether I would be happy or not. I, I and the thing with a coach coming from the National League who's only been in the National League and probably has been doing it part-time in association with a full-time job, is that um, would they have the contacts that are necessary to put together a elite league roster? And that would be the sort that would be the sort of concern that I would have with, with that sort of appointment. Obviously, we don't know yet who is coming in to the Nottingham Panthers. A uh, new head coach has not been announced at, uh, as of the, this point. Um, and looking at the other elite league clubs, there's probably a vacancy at Cardiff. Um, and then everybody else, I think, is pretty much covered. Um, I mean, Belfast, Adam Keefe, I can't see him leaving there. I can't see Danny Stewart leaving Coventry. But all the rest are... Uh, are sort of big Doug. 
don't think that's going to happen. I can't see Big Doug coming over. And for the reason being that I think he's just about to, or his wife is just about to have a baby. So I think it's very likely that uh, Doug Christensen will be staying in North America. So uh, I would think that's quite unlikely to happen there in that regard. Uh, next question comes from Marco Doherty, who is a Coventry Blaze fan. And he says, on the back of a disappointing season for you guys at Panthers, what do you think will be the club's reaction next season? Will they take a measured approach and build gradually to get back to competing with the other big clubs? Or do you think a big splash on wages will be the way forward to try and ensure the best possible chance to win? I think after what Omar Pasha said last week, I think we will be far more competitive next season. Whether we will be in line to win the title, I'm not so sure, especially after what he said. He, he, sort of, he seemed to temper expectations in that regard somewhat by saying, you know, we will compete. I'm not saying we're going to win the title straight away, but we, we, we want to compete. I think with Nottingham, it's going to take time. It's going to take time to bed in. It's a brand new position for Omar Pasha. Um, he's already impressed the vast majority of the fan base with the communication that he's had with them since he took the job, um, which is probably more than we've had for many, many seasons. So he's had an incredibly impressive start. So... I think it will be gradual. I think I would like to think there will be possibly a bigger player budget and better um, and better recruitment, hopefully, uh, depending on who the coach is. But I don't think if, if anybody's expecting everything to change immediately for the better, um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be probably a couple of years um, for everything to sort of settle down and, and for, for for whatever changes Omar Pasha wants to make within the club to actually take hold. So um, to answer your question, Mark, uh, I, I don't think there will be a massive splash on wages and money thrown at it straight away. I think there maybe will be an increase in budget but I think it's going. It is going to be a far more measured approach, and gradually getting back to hopefully the levels where we were in sort of twenty twelve thirteen. Um, but it's a big job, uh, and that is going to take time. I think. Uh, um, Chris Lovell, he says, Pasha is an incredible recruiter. Look at the unknown players he bought into the elite league and have no big clubs sniffing around them. Expect a few hidden gems in Nottingham next year. <coughs> Certainly did. Uh, there was a lot of decent uh, players that he brought in. Bankson was a uh, was a gem for them. Uh, Combs was a gem for them. Sanch was, had a really good season. Kyle Haas, for, for all you say about the penalty minutes he accumulated, he was a very, very good defenceman and, and right up there with regards to the plus minus ratings as well. So uh, he did find some very, very good plays for that Dundee roster this past season. And they were rewarded by getting to the playoff weekend. Chris also says, throwing money at it doesn't always work. Ain't that right, Steelers fans? Hold that thought. There's something, something might be coming up uh, on that a little later on. Yeah, that'll, that'll keep you interested for a bit. Um, the next question, uh, which is also Panthers related, comes from Adam RP89, who is on at this moment. And he sent me a DM, which I just need to pull up at the moment. Uh, and he says, I did a Facebook poll about season tickets for the Panthers on the fans group. Uh, the results I got was 107 interactions, 65 are renewing, 26 new applications, six still considering, three awaiting, three of those are waiting for the head coach announcement, 13 not renewing. I was really surprised about the new applications to non-renewal numbers. Why has this happened? Any ideas? What do you think of the numbers? And he says, will this be good for the club? As I was 
I was worried that if we were to lose season tickets, then that could ne- negatively affect the budgets we'll have in the future season. <clears throat> I think um, there's obviously a glow from Omar Pasha's announcement and what he said. I think that has enthused an awful lot of fans. And I think a, a lot of fans who were probably on the fence about renewing next season have probably opted to renew because of the change, which can only be a good thing. Um, I, I said a few weeks ago, I won't be renewing. I am sticking to that simply from a work point of view. I would love to renew, especially with Omar Pasha coming in. Um, but doing what I do, weekends are my sort of time time for work where I, I do get work. Uh, and I probably miss 10 to 12 Panthers games this season. So it's not really cost effective for me to get a season ticket. Uh, I will still go, uh, but I'll just buy a ticket for, for games that I can get to. Um, so I, I'm not, personally, I'm not renewing, but it's not because of what's happened on the ice. It's purely from a personal work point of view that, that I won't be renewing. But I must admit from from those numbers that you, you've given, Adam, and, and t- to be fair, it's not not a huge amount uh, of respondents in 107, but it's a decent number as a percentage uh, of the fan base. And yeah, they, they, they are encouraging numbers. And I'm sure if, if Omar Pasha saw them or the club saw them, they'd be very encouraged by those. So yeah, uh, th- that that is all, all really positive and really good. I think obviously... A lot depends on who the head coach is going to be, and probably who the first few signings will be. Who will be? If it's a if it's a a really positive announcement on the head coach, and there's a few positive signings prior to the end of this month, then I think that could see a, a, another another boost in season ticket sales, which can only be good for the club. Um, but you're right; if we were to lose season ticket holders, that could ne- negatively affect budgets. Um, so, you know, I think the more season ticket holders that the club gets, the better it is overall. But again, that's probably one of the things that Omar Pasha needs to work on with the off-ice team over the summer and over uh, the next season. Uh, as I said in, in, in answer to a previous question, it's going to take time to take hold uh, and Omar Pasha is going to need to be given time to put things right. It's not going to happen overnight. But I think if he can grow the fan base in the first season, then that's that's going to be a, a big, big win. Evening, Anthony. Great to have you along. Uh, Chris Lovell says, I think the appointment of Pasha helps. It shows ambition, but ultimately success brings new fans in. Every year, Belfast have success in the season ticket numbers. Always have a surge the following year. Yeah, and if you don't get an increase in season tickets in Belfast this season, there is something very, very wrong, especially after the season that the Giants have just had, which was incredible. (laughs) Absolutely superb. Uh, Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them in the uh, chat, as Jamie has just done, or at John O'Bullard on Twitter, and I will get to them. Uh, Jamie's asking about GB's lack of goals being a major concern. Uh, I'll be talking about GB very, very short, shortly. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that then because uh, there are a few, uh, quite a few questions around uh, Great Britain. Uh, next question comes from my good friend Chris Gradsby uh, of Lions Media and uh, my fellow Manchester Storm commentator. And he asks... Which team has overperformed and which has underperformed based on what you expected at the start of the season? Uh, great question. I really had to think about this from the from the overperformed standpoint. The underperformed straight away. And Steelers fans aren't going to like this, but the team which under, underperformed for me was the Sheffield Steelers by a, a mile, far more than anyone else. I know Steelers fans who, who watch this, who, who listen to this, will probably be going, but surely it's the Panthers. With the roster that Panthers signed, I think we sort of expected it wasn't going to be great. With the roster that the Steelers signed, um, I think a lot of their fans expected that they should clean up, uh, and they didn't. Uh, for that team to not even make a cup final... 
that that wasn't good. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, you could say they finished second in the league. They pushed Belfast to what the second to last season. But I think with that roster that the Steelers had, they would be have been wanting to have a say in all three trophies. And the fact that they didn't even make the playoff weekend, never mind the final, and got knocked out of the uh, Challenge Cup at the semi-final stage, I think you have to say that the, 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 the team that underperformed the most for me, and you are welcome to disagree, but this is my opinion, it, it, it was the Sheffield Steelers. As far as overperformed... And I, 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 had a, I had a good think about this, but I think for me that that has to go to the Glasgow clan because if you think about it, they didn't even know if they was going to exist probably a month before the season started. And they had a lot of issues with getting the deal on their arena where they ran the arena. So that led to them starting in November. So I, I, I do think from the position they was in where they had to get all their league games in, in a short space of time, uh, very close together. And the fact that they finished, I think, what was it, sixth? That, that was a hell of a performance by Matt Malcolm Cameron's team. Because I, I think I, I was saying uh, at the start of the season on here that I think they they are a team that could struggle because of the the schedule that they have, but that they got through it, uh, and you know, very very nearly made the playoff finals weekend. Um, it was very late before Cardiff confirmed their place there, and obviously went on to win it. Uh, but for me, I think uh, the overperforming team has to be the Glasgow clan. Uh, what's uh... Was on the chat, Adam says word is they are already calling sponsors for coffee meetings with Nicola. Well, that's good. That's very good that the Panthers are engaging sponsors already. Uh, Chris Lovell, he says, had a large points gap in January. Sheffield did the devils when being chased by Belfast. They just couldn't handle it. Just a t hint of bias in what you're saying there, Chris, I think. Chris, again, clan could be dark courses next season. I, I think that's that's a really good that's a really good uh, point there, Chris. For the sim, because Malcolm Cameron is going to have the whole summer to recruit. Uh, their future is settled. Yeah, I think I think that's a good shout. Clan could be uh, could be dark horses. Anthony agrees. Oh, oh, no, he doesn't. Clan can't be called Dark Horses. Another thing for Malcolm to kick, blow up, or what, what not isn't required. But he's always good for a quote, Malcolm Cameron. That's what makes him such a good character in the league, for me, anyway. Okay, let's move on um, to the next question. Who comes from, uh, from my old friend, Nick Bramley, who lives in Australia, at Nick the Panther on Twitter. He says, do you think there'd be any interest in the best of British Cup between the Elite League and the NIHL? Brit selectors from each league for a one-game event. It'd be great to get the fans of both league leagues together and could potentially be the start of more cooperation in the future. Not to mention the opportunity for Brits from both leagues to showcase their abilities for future opportunities. You know what? That, that, that would be interesting. Now, whether it, it could we could get the various governing bodies to talk to each other for, for long enough to sort something out like this, who knows? But yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. And I think it would be an interesting game because there's a lot of quality Brits in the, in the national league. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and there's an awful lot of quality Brits. Some would say the top Brits are in the elite league. Be interesting to see how that one will work out. Or how that one would go, and I, I think I think fans will buy into that and watch that because you, you look at the two leagues and you go, you've got a fourteen import elite league and a two import national league. But as far as the Brits are concerned, it's probably more of a level playing field. So, so it would be really interesting to to pit the top British talent in the national league, and not just the national league, but NIHL one as well. Uh, there's some good players in there against the top of the elite league Brit. Uh, that, that, yeah, I, th I think that would be really a really really good game. I mean, whether the, uh, whether that it it could be arranged and whether they 
could arrange it between themselves remains to be seen. But if you're watching EIHA and EIHL, get that sorted because I think that would uh, that would be a, a great a great match for people to watch. Definitely. <clears throat> Back to the comments and Cam Chris Lovell Cameron knows how an elite league season works. Now that's a very good point. He's had a season uh, in the elite league. He knows what to expect next season, um, which also you know will be an advantage to the clan without a doubt. Uh, Rob Asprey says hi, John. I'm sorry, I was late to the party. Opinions about Matt Ginn as head coach of the Manchester Storm. For me, good appointment. Storm are one of the teams who don't have the budget of the likes of Nottingham, Sheffield, Belfast, Cardiff, etc., etc. Um, obviously, they've moved Ryan Infinity up to the general manager slot. Uh, Matt Gint was injured for a good proportion of the season, but he was part of the coaching team while he was injured. He was on, on the bench with Finner, learning his trade as an assistant coach. Um, I think it's a really good input, uh, appointment. He knows the club. He knows the players. He knows what's expected. He he knows about the building that they play out of. And he's got a mentor in Ryan Finity who can help him and advise him and guide him in the right direction. I, I, I think it was a really shrewd, um, a, a really shrewd appointment by the Manchester Storm. <coughs> and... You know they they will be looking they will be looking to um, they will be looking to improve on their performance this season where they finished ninth uh, didn't make the quarterfinals of the um, of the uh, Challenge Cup and didn't even make the quarterfinals of the playoffs so they will be looking for improvement next season. Uh, I, I think it's a, a really, really good appointment. And that leads on to actually to to another question that I was going to bring up later. Uh, just see if I can find it. Here it is. It's from HockeyFan654321. He says, who do you think will do better, Jeff Mason at Dundee or Matt Ginn at Storm? I, I'll let you know. <laughs> March next season. Uh, I I don't know is is the quick question because Rob I see Rob has followed that up with about Jeff Mason becoming head coach of Dundee Stars, uh, and, and this, a similar thing for 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 Jeff Mason. He has been three seasons as assistant coach to Adam Keith with the Belfast Giants, who have been incredibly successful, which is a great grounding for him to go into Dundee. On his own, I think they're two very, very shrewd appointments. Um, as for who I think will do better at this stage, I really don't know. I think it depends on the recruitment, who they get in, the rosters that they build. Um, but uh, I, I can't say at this moment until until I see what sort of signings that they make. But I think, but I think both are very, very good appointments. I think with Mason going in as the GM as well at Dundee, that's he's got to hit the ground running a bit because he's only been an assistant coach. He's now going to head coach and GM. Um, so that will take him a few months probably to find his feet. And I really, really hope that uh, the Dundee fans give him that chance to find his feet. And I'm sure they will. The same with the Storm fans for, for Matt Ginn. Just give him that time. To, to become his own man, his own coach, uh, and and coach the the roster that he chooses, however he wants to. Um, but you know, I think it is you can't say who I can't say who I think will do better at this point because I simply don't know because they they've still got rosters to pick. And, you know, maybe ask me again at the start of next season when they have um, um, when they have. Uh, chosen their rosters and we um, they've probably hit the ice a couple of times and then uh, then I'll be probably be able to give a, a more rounded answer to that question uh, let's look at the comments again Sean Phillips says is it the responsibility of the Elite League or for Ice Hockey UK to organise such a game as discussed and assume Sean you're talking about the um, EIHL Brits against the uh, National League Brits 
the EIHL is not a development league. I agree. Uh, will elite league players want to play? Will they be paid or risk injury? Um, I, it's a good question. But I think if it, if it captures the imagination, uh, it's played at an arena or rink where it's likely to sell out and sell tickets, then why shouldn't the participants be paid? Um I, I just think I think it's a, a really interesting concept, and I think it it will sort of answer a question because a lot a lot of people do say that the Brits in the National League are really talented, and a lot of them are only in the National League because they're combining their hockey with a full time job, whereas a lot of the Brits in the Elite League it is it is their full time job because they're able to commit to that. So I I just think it would be a really interesting matchup. Um, but I take your point about w- will they elite league players want to play? Yeah, I think I, I think they would. I do think they would. Yeah. So there we go. Um, next question uh, comes from Paul Gretton. So we've got a few. Uh, few Great Britain questions coming up. He says, uh, after watching the Great Britain warm-up game at the weekend, we miss Kirk and Hammond. We do indeed. Who do you think will score some goals this time around? Uh, I'll quickly go to Twitter because GB were losing 2-0 to Italy. And it still appears that is the score, which means they've only scored one goal in the four games that they've had, which was scored by Ross Venus last Thursday against Italy. Uh, it's a worry, without a doubt, that you know, they, they, they appear to be very light on goals. But there is goal scoring in that squad. You know, uh, Scott Conway is in there. Robert Dowd is in there. Um, Luke Ferreira is in there. All who scored uh, you know, a good amount of points in the Elite League. Uh, Evan Mosey, of course. So, so there are players who can find the net. The question is, can they consistently find the net at that level? And I think that's the question. Um, because if you, I mean, anyone who, who was uh, at, the, at the game on Sunday, I, I was at the game on Sunday where Denmark beat Great Britain 8-0. Denmark were just a different level, uh, an absolute different level. The passing was incredible the goals they scored were absolutely superb but then they've got nhl khl ahl <laughs> shl they've got so much talent in that squad from much much better leagues than the than the elite league and no disrespect to the elite league but the majority of the great britain squad is mainly a, a, a elite league it's all, of course, missing Liam Kirk, who was a top goal scorer last, last year. Missing Mike Hammond, who scored eight points in, I think, 14 World Championship games. Over two World Championships, he's out injured. So that's two huge losses for the, um, for the Great Britain team. Two huge losses. Uh, and I... It's, it's going to be a very, very tough in Finland, but these are just warm-up games. Let's see how they are when they actually get to the tournament, which, let's face it, a lot of players in that squad have had experience of playing at that level of tournament. Um, so they know what is expected and they know what they've got to do. Um, David Stevenson asks, what's your thoughts on towards the GB line pairings? Do you th- like to see players at club level playing together due to familiarity? Or do you feel that mixing players up gets better results? I think the, the, prob- the problem we've had, and I'll bring in the next question, which comes from, comes from Chris Lovell, who says, what are what our thoughts on how the delayed Elite League and others may impact overall on the Great Britain's preparation for the world? That has clearly had an impact because the Elite League finished a week later. So that's a week off training camp time for Great Britain. <clears throat> but I think one of the biggest problems with regards to Great Britain is the fact that there are international breaks throughout the season and Great Britain don't take part in them. This is the first time that the Great Britain team have got 
together since last year's World Championships. How can you expect to compete at the top level of the World Championships if you're only getting together once a year? It's really no surprise what's happened in these warm-up games because the players haven't played together. And that is is not good. And I know there's obviously been the problem with COVID and, and all the problems that that brings. But, <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. But <laughs> how can you expect a team to consistently perform at that level if they're not having training camps or they're not getting together or they're not they're not playing games against other, you know, other Paul A nations. It's, it's ridiculous. I, it does. It absolutely, it absolutely blows my mind. And I think that's the biggest problem. It's not the fact that it's not the fact that they're, um, they're getting beaten in these warm-up games. It's just the fact that they're just not used to playing with each other. And that's always going to be an issue. <coughs> uh, Adam said, Betteridge and Lee is a massive loss too. Betteridge, def uh, definitely. Um, but I think Steve Lee, this is the second finals he's missed, World Championships he's missed now. Um, so probably not as big a loss as what Betteridge's, to be fair. Um, but yes, there are the players. There are players missing through injury, so th th there's a lack of depth there as well. But the the one thing that I would I would say to the governing bodies, uh, the various leagues, and whoever runs the sport in this country, please allow the team to get together at international breaks. If that means you have to not have a game that weekend, don't have a game that weekend. You know, help the national team out. Uh, how, how much better for, for the development of the team and the standing of the team and the preparation of the team if they were able to get together a couple of times during the season and play other nations around them in Pool A or the top of um, Division 1A. It would make a massive, massive difference uh, and and i i think that that is that is the reason why we may be struggling a bit this season so far certainly in in the uh in the warm-up games let's see how we got online the tour tournament itself but should the tournament not go well uh, and the team i really hope they don't but you know, th there is a possibility of it happening of the team getting relegated. If they do, I hope it's looked at and the reasons why, and one of the biggest reasons why will be because the team doesn't get together enough. And that needs to change if you want them to compete at this level. They've worked so hard to get, not only get to this level, but stay at this level. Reward them by allowing them to meet up more than once a season when the World Championships happen. Because that isn't the greatest preparation. And that is what needs to happen now. There, off my soapbox. <laughs> so, uh, next question, Steve Tonks. Does anyone know how Liam T Kirk's recovery is progressing? <clears throat> Personally, I I'm not sure. I know he's in Arizona due to a reply he gave to uh, GB General Manager Andy Buxton on Twitter the other day. Uh, aside from that, I'm not sure. So if anybody else does know, please do pop it in the chat box or let me know on Twitter and I can let everybody else know. Uh, another question from Dave at uh, Binit Dave, who says, the social media presence across the Elite League at times is questionable. If the Elite League said, Jono, we want you to give us 10 commandments for how the league and its club should use social media, what would they be? You don't need 10. As far as I'm concerned, you need three. Make it engaging, make sure it's relevant, and most importantly of all, be professional. Because I think there's a few club social media accounts that can be very unprofessional at times. Um, so, you know, give a good impression. Be professional. 
Um, don't, don't let Simsy near it. I think that, that's that's great advice for us all. <laughs> but but there, there you you don't need ten commandments. If social social media is simple. Using it is simple. Just use it properly. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, it's as simple as that. Yeah, Adam RP eighty nine. Look at the Lions media. Perfect example. Perfect example. Three and a literally shorthanded. Oh dear, oh dear. <clears throat> Uh, let's have a look at some of the comments. Uh, Adam again, as at Lions are practically no budget, so an exhibition match against the Panthers would be really helpful. Would it be really helpful, though? I mean, I can see what you're saying by getting people through the door to put m money in, but let, let's be honest, that's going to be a huge mis mismatch if Panthers play their strongest side. Um, and what would the Lions learn from that? Probably very little. I don't. I don't think that would be a good idea, personally. Uh, Anthony says there's a lot of talent in Brits in the National League because the spots are not there in the Elite League forum. The curse of Aaron now lives on. Uh, dear. Uh, Rob Asprey again. He says, "Who are your favourite next generation players of upcoming GB talent, and do you expect them to be the Elite League, or do they have the capacity to go to better leagues?" <laughs> I think one of the ones who's really stood out for me in the uh, for Great Britain is Kate Nielsen, uh, an outstanding addition to the squad for me. A player who I've seen a lot playing at under twenty and under eighteen level for Great Britain. Uh, he's going to the NCAA Division One uh, with Alaska next season. You don't play NCAA Division One. If if you haven't got the talent, and he has got the talent in spades, um, so he is obviously aimed higher than, than the elite league. Uh, upcoming talent, uh, there's Liam Steele, who has been mentioned in the uh, NH NHL draft. His ranking has dropped a bit, which is a concern, but a very good defenseman. Uh, so he's being talked about in in those sort of uh, circles as well. And uh, yeah, there's a there are a few real good up and coming players. I think I think in the elite league as well. You you only have to look at how players like Liam Stanton, for example, who were at Sol Solway, spent the second half of the season with Glasgow and really impressed their head coach Malcolm Cam Cameron. I would expect Liam Stanton to be full time at Glasgow next season. Um, Jack Hopkins, I can see. Uh, Crocky ZX has just said, uh, yeah, Jack, I'd, I'd love to see him being given the shot by the Panthers, but he needs to be on the first two first two lines. Uh, it's no good putting Jack Hopkins on line three or four. He's not that sort of player. He's not a grinding forward. He's a, he's a forward who scores goals, gets assists. He has to be playing at, at, that, at that sort of you know, position. In order for him to be effective, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, Liam Stenton in the Division One final was a different class for Solway. Also, his mum let me hold the trophy, so that was nice. Says so Anthony. Yeah, I saw, he, I, I saw some footage of one of the goals that he set up. It was, it was superb. But you know, he's been playing four or five months at elite league level, so to to come back to to the sort of NIHL one level. It's, you would expect him to sort of dominate that sort of game, and it, it looks like that he did. Zach Yokoyama is a brilliant player, 50 points in 28 games. Yep, uh, Yokoyama Yoko is superb at NIHL one level. He needs to probably look at National League level to look to progress and see how he does there. Um, so, yeah, he's a brilliant player at NIHL one. He needs to test himself now, probably at national league level, to see if he's got the talent to to get that sort of points return at national league. Um, Yokoyama, who magically became English for those games versus Denmark, he actually he holds a British passport, so I think that was actually. It was purely. It was. It was legit because I, I do believe he holds a British passport. 
Uh, let's crack on with, with the rest of the questions. Uh, Hockeyfan654321 again. He says, do you think Fife will go for a change of head coach this year? There's rumours Todd Dutien might move to GM. I have seen those rumours, but I should, let's be honest, it'll be very odd to see the Fife Flyers without Todd Dutien as head coach. I can't at this moment see that changing. Um, it may do. Who knows? Um, but I... I haven't seen. Uh, there are rumours, but I haven't seen anything to suggest that you know Fife might go with a new head coach. But I guess that's a, a, a sort of wait and see, see what happens during the off season. Paul Gretton asks if we could go ten Brits, ten imports, and two net miners, and all teams running four lines. Do you think the game would be faster and more entertaining? Uh, it's a tough one to answer. Um, possibly. I mean, the elite series was eight imports, and the rest Brits and four lines, and that was incredibly entertaining. But that was a condent condensed to four teams, so the best Brits were spreading them around themselves around four teams instead of ten teams, which will make a difference. Um, I would like to see the elite league go to 10 imports anyway gradually i mean it can't be done overnight I'm, I'm not suggesting that they go from 14 imports this season to 10 imports next but i would like i would like to see them like gradually bring it down over the next few seasons to 10 maybe reducing by uh one a season which allows them to bring more Brit brits in to get acclimatise with the level that they need to be at for the Elite League and then reduce it again, reduce it again. But I think the 19-man roster limit was an, was absolutely ridiculous to to prevent teams from icing four lines was, you know, beyond silly. So I think it has to be at least a minute. Uh, uh, if you're going to change it, then at least make it 20 on the bench so we can go back to four lines. That has to happen for me. Uh, Chris Lovell, get rid of the stupid bench size. We've imposed this season, arguably led to injuries from players being overworked. Could not agree more. Could not agree more. Right, final question, uh, which comes another one from Dave Binnett. Dave, so if you've got any more questions, Twitter at John O'Bullard in the hockey chat. This will be your last chance for this season. Uh, I will be doing these sporadically over the summer, but I don't know when the next one will be. So this is your last chance to get a question in if you want to get one in. Um, so Dave asks, if you were an elite league coach, what one player would you go after first? This has to be a realistic signing. The player can't be signed or played for an elite league team last season. That's very, very easy. As soon as you sent it, I know exactly who I would sign, and that would be Mike Hammond. Played in uh, DL3 last season, scored 90 points in 49 games. Um, has always been a massive goal scorer in the Elite League. Um, over a point a game, well over a point a game in the Elite League, well over a point a game in Denmark, massively over a point a game in DL3, which I, I think he, he deserves. He was over a point a game in DL2 when he was playing on Corey Nielsen's team as well. Um, so yeah, for me, Mike Hammond every day of the week, uh, great player at elite league level would be, I, I want a Panthers to sign him for many, many seasons and whether they do go out and sign him this season, who knows, but, uh, I'd love to see him playing in Nottingham, uh, absolutely quality player at elite league level. So yes, with, without any thought whatsoever. Uh, it would be uh, it would be Mike Hammond. Let's see a couple of questions come in uh, on the chat. Sean Phillips, if players are able to compete overseas with the nationals of that country, should they aim for a better league there over the EIHL? Uh, Nielsen in the US, Joey Lewis in Germany. Yeah, I think you should always aim to be play at the best level that you can play. 
Now, that might be a detriment to the Elite League if the best Brits are going abroad, but at the, at the end of the day, it's a short career. Why not challenge yourself? Why not try and perform to the best of your ability? And if that means you have to leave the Elite League to do that, then then that's what you do. So that's uh, that would be my view on that. <coughs> Chris Lovell, if you could pick a coach to take over as head coach of the Panthers from coaches in the Elite League in the past five years, who would it be? Easy, Adam Keith. Don't even have to think about it. Uh, Anthony Russell, Hammond on that Hanover Scorpions, Scorpions team was overpowered to hell and just didn't get over the line. Oberliga North is a real rainbow of ability. Uh, Lightning Jack, if Mike Hammond comes back to the Elite League, can he can pick up his cat 100 percent true stories his cat's still in manchester then is it uh anthony russell also what happened to that rumor we discussed earlier right at the top of the show before you came in anthony we talked about that one rob asprey do you think if pasha has a spare 11.34 million he could sign austin matthews for next season i doubt it Barry Trotz is available, though. I, mean, I wouldn't mind him as our coach of the Panthers. Can't see it happening, though. Uh, Sean Phillips, players go overseas to develop, so the Elite League risk losing that level of player long term. Seems a vicious circle. Coke, Kirk won't get to import standard here, but heads over and he's too good for here. Yep. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, you look at Liam Kirk at Sheffield. Didn't get a lot of ice time, let's be honest. And then he goes to the OHL, does really well, gets drafted, comes back for the Elite Series, is a pivotal player for Sheffield in the Elite Series, uh, and then you know is a joint record goal scorer in the World Championships. Yeah, <laughs> but that that's what he he went away to develop, and that's what he did. Chris Lovell, if the rumours are true about Bounds and he does return to the Elite League, is this a mistake? Surely, given his number, he should stay in Europe for now. Depends if anyone in Europe wants him. Also, he's now over 30. Um, and I know he's married. So, you know, he, he's been there. He's been, he's been to Austria. He's been to Slovakia. You know, has he... Has he done enough for him now? I, I I agree he's good enough to stay out in Europe. I think I, I totally agree. It's one, whether another team in Europe wants him. And two, whether he feels he wants to settle back in the UK uh, with his wife. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know how long they've been married. Maybe they want to start a family. I don't know. But, you know, that's some, something else to consider, isn't it? So, you know. You'd have Bounty at Rostock. A Rostock, Rostock are Oberliga, though, aren't they? Are they're not DL2, or, or are they now? Um, but yeah, I, I think I think Bounty's DL2 is probably a good shout. I don't think he made DL, but I think maybe back in Austria, certainly in Slovakia, where he's done really well. But, you know, if he does come back to the Elite League, I really hope it's in Nottingham. I really do. But who knows? Who knows? Oberliga North, same division Hammond played in. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that, no disrespect to that, but I think that's a little bit below uh, Ben Bounds' level, if I'm honest. Okay, going to wrap it up there then, as there's no more questions. All that remains for me to say is thank you so, so much to everyone who's been part of these chats throughout the season, to everyone who sent questions in, uh, I say it every week, but without you, there is no show, there's no discussion. So thank you so much to everyone. Uh, it's very, very appreciative, very humbling that you take the time out to not only come and join in with this, but also to take the time to send questions in. Um, so th this is it. Enjoy the World Championships that are coming up. I'm sure Great Britain will need all the support that they can get. Uh, and, we, and um, we will give them that support, I'm sure. Uh, but for now, uh, that is it for the 21-22 season. Uh, as I say, I will be back uh, two or three times over the off-season, at least I would think, uh, as things happen. 
But for now, for this season, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, take care. Have a great summer. And, uh, you know, enjoy yourselves. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.